a morning reading from John Main on Christian meditation, the way of unknowing, John Main. The meaning, a meaningful life. So how do we get a meaningful life? On the influences of modern life, we are all subject to, uh, is what we are all subject to is that of advertising. Modern advertising is inevitably concerned with what is new, with proclaiming novelty. <laughs> And so in much of our experience of life of reality, we are conditioned to be nervously concerned about what is new, what is the latest. The result is that instead of seeing life as a whole and as a process of growth and of maturity, of intrigue, integrating depth and surface levels, we merely move from one thing to another. We easily lose the sense of connectedness between events in our lives that can drift imperceptibly into a state of being continually distracted. Novelties are the distractions, one following the other with the thinnest thread of association and even none at all. As most people are discovering today, if we do live our lives just moving from one novelty to another. We very quickly find a frightening sort of dullness setting in, for nothing seems to satisfy us if we are only connected with things that are outside of ourselves. Now the way of meditation is a serious attempt to live life and to understand life no longer in terms of always finding some novelty. We seek an understanding infinitely greater than that. We are led to an understanding that life, each and every moment of it, is perpetually new. This newness is not just a passing novelty, because you discover that in every moment you are springing from the creative hand of God. Godlike newness underpins all life as unique reality. Human novelty is the most fragile of life's superstructures. So if we can learn to start living from the depths of this underpinning reality, which is also the depths of our own being, we will encounter your own capacity, your own potential. You will then soon discover that life is always marvelously fresh, continually exciting. Because it is always expanding, your sights are always stretching forward into infinity, not contracting into this or that passing object of satisfaction. This is why a person meditates. We meditate because we understand that the human spirit was created precisely for an infinite expansion of being, but we must always be careful not to be misled by the intoxication of language the way forward is on to a journey which is totally, truly adventurous, leading you into the infinite depths and ultimately to infinite expansion because your heart, your entire being, is created by for union with the infinite God. It is an adventure that is a journey that demands discipline. We would be very foolish only to dream about the vision and fail actually to take the steps required to enter the vision. Do not be misled by the idea of discipline. Everyone is invited to tread this path. Discipline is a universal norm. The whole thrust of the New Testament and the ensuing Christian revelation is that every man and woman alive has been brought into being for this very growth, for depth, maturity, and union with God. Not what must we do. Now what must we do? How do we set out on this venture of our own creation? <laughs> If you want to meditate, uh, the first thing you re require is to be serious about it. Not solemn, but serious. Mm -hmm. To see this as a serious invitation will lead you to the deepest personal actualization of your potential. If you want to learn to meditate, you must put aside the time for it every day of your life. Ideally, you can find a time every morning and every evening. The morning time of meditation sets the tone for the day and prepares you to set out on your daily pilgrimage, knowing better who you are. 
then your evening meditation brings together all the various strands of the day's activities and unifies them through your own concentration. So you must understand that the daily discipline is of immense importance. You cannot make the journey by just admiring the spiritual realities from a distance. You must enter. You must taste and see the time I recommend you to spend in meditation is a minimum of 20 minutes and an optimum time of half an hour every morning and every evening. Meditating is itself you utterly simple. You take your word, your mantra. The word I recommend you take is Maranatha. And you say it by articulating the four syllables. Give equal strength to each one. Ma, ra, nata. Find your own rhythm for saying it and then recite the word in silence in the depths of your spirit. Do not analyze. Do not ask yourself, am I enjoying this? Do not ask yourself, am I getting anything out of this? Let the self-reflective consciousness switch off and just say the word in your heart continually from the beginning to the end. Do not think, do not imagine, do not entertain any words that come into your consciousness, but just say your mantra from beginning to end. Sit as still as you can, as silently as you can. Meditating is the wonderful state of total harmony between body and spirit in the absolute unity of perfect peace. And so when you meditate, prepare for a few moments to be get really comfortable. The only essential rule of posture is that your spine is kept upright. As upright as you can comfortably make it. Sit straight. Then sit still throughout your Sit still throughout your meditation. Do not move. As movement will be distraction, that outward stillness is no small discipline, but it is a great sign of the inward stillness that will come as you say your mantra. The purpose of meditating is to advance along the way of the fullness of your own humanity. Meditating is simply accepting the gift of our creation and developing the potential we have to expand. Uh, Respond to the gift fully. We are not people who have to live on the surface or people who are condemned to live lives of shallow emotion. Meditating is leaving the shadows, leaving the surface and entering into the depths of your own being. The reason why in Christian tradition we meditate is that we believe that Jesus has sent his spirit into the depths to dwell in our hearts or to use other words, the spirit of God, the spirit of the creator of the universe dwells in our hearts and in silence is loving to all. In the Christian tradition, meditating is simply being open to the spirit of love, the spirit of God, the fulfillment of human nature is at the center of Christian teaching is what St. Paul was asserting in his words to be the Colossians, 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 Colossians. Therefore, since Jesus was delivered to you as Christ, and Lord, live your lives in union with him. Be rooted in him. <laughs> Be built in him, for it is in Christ that the complete being of the God who dwells in body, and in him you have been brought to completion. Colossians 2, 6, 7. The essential message of Christianity is that our call and our potential is to enter into the life of God through Jesus, through his spirit printed in our heart. We do this not by analyzing God or analyzing Jesus, not by thinking about God or thinking about Jesus, but by being silent and sit and still. And in his, his spirit's presence, opening our hearts to his love, we do not, we do so in the steady rhythm of our daily meditation. There is a great paradox to face. People looking at meditation from the outside see it as dull repetition. They see the saying of the mantra as some something so repetitive as to be 
almost impossible. But if you really learn to say the mantra, that is, if you really learn to meditate, you will find that the mantra can never become mere repetition. It never becomes boring because it is always in new depths taking you beyond yourself. It is always opening your spirit to what is beyond, to more of the infinity of God. But these are only words, and we can only learn this from your own experience. You can learn it only if you can learn to say your mantra, not thinking of yourself, not surveying yourself in the science of meditation, but by letting go of thought and all self-concern. Say the word with the simplicity of a child. As St. Paul says elsewhere, the secret of life is Christ because in Christ lie hidden all the treasures of God's wisdom and knowledge. The astonishing thing is that Christ himself is to be found in our own hearts. Learning to say your mantra is simply setting out on this pilgrimage to your own heart, there to find all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. We're reading from The Way of Unknowing, John Maine. And in the cloud of unknowing, we combine to chapter 5. 5. And if you should ever reach this cloud and dwell and work in it as I am telling you, then just as this cloud of unknowing is above you, between you and your God, so you will need to put a cloud of forgetting beneath you, between you and everything that was ever created. Perhaps it will seem to you that you are far distant from God because the cloud of unknowing is between you and him. But in fact, rightly understood, you are much further from him when you have no cloud of forgetting between you and everything that ever that was ever created. Whenever I say everything that was ever created, I mean not only the created things themselves, but all they do and all their attributes. I do not accept anything created, neither bodily or spiritual beings, nor any act or attribute of any being, whether good or evil, but in brief, they should all be hidden in this way under the cloud of forgetting. For though it may sometimes be very beneficial to think of particular attributes and acts of specific created beings, there is nevertheless of little or no benefit in their work of contemplation. Consciousness or recollection of anything that God ever created, or equally of any such creature's acts, is a kind of spiritual insight for the eye of your soul is open to and fixed upon it as the eye of an archer is on the target he is aiming at, and I tell you one thing, that everything you are thinking of is above you while you are thinking of it and between you and your God, and you are further from God to the extent that anything is in your mind but God alone. Yes, and it is not discourteous and unseemly to say so. In this work of contemplation, it is of little or no benefit to think of God's kindness or excellence or Our Lady or the saints or angels in heaven or even the joys of heaven, that is, with particular attention to them, as if by meditating on them you would sustain and strengthen your purpose. I believe that in these circumstances, in this work, it cannot be so at all for Good though it may be to think of God's acts of kindness and to love and praise him for them, it is far better to think of his naked being and to love and praise him for himself. Chapter 5 From the Cloud of Unknowing The first part from John Maine we have John Maine and the cloud author in the cloud. And we're going to put this reading into the cloud. Mm -hmm. 